The business finder this morning says policy rate to go down. Analysts predict as 89th MPC meeting kick starts. That's the big one. And uh, media budget will enforce or reinforce policy programs. The finder uh, has those stories. The BNFT says a $15 billion uh, cocoa byproduct market untapped. Professor Boateng there, and 82% of LPG stations in Central Region identified as high risk. Uh, the Ghanaian Times 80-bed Kaswa Polyclinic left unused. After two years of completion, a photograph is here. Men's Gold customers besieged CID headquarters to present petition. Speaker of Parliament sworn in as acting president. And the Japan uh, provides $1.38 million scholarship grant to Ghana. The Daily Graphic, U.S. assures Ghana of support to facilitate trade. And nine fishermen rescued at sea. Uh, Sandema Senior High Tech School uh, closed down. One student dies over a uh, demo and counsel and prosecution disagree over focus jury selection. The Daily Guide, Stop My Trial, Ajariga tells court. And uh, Alex Mould's oil and gas claims challenged. And... Um, 55% of Ghanaians know their HIV status. Those are some of the stories I have with me this morning. Today talking, a member of the NPP's team, Eric Chum is here. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Hope Brian. you are doing great. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm great too. Thanks for your time. And the Acting General Secretary of the CPP, James Kwabena Bonfe, Kabila is here. Good morning too. Good morning, Brian. Hope you are doing great. God has been good. And welcome back home. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Was it waiting for the rep from the um, <clears throat> NDC? Now, if you go to page 17 of the Daily Graphic, this is a story sure uh, you're very uh, familiar with. The Speaker of Parliament, Professor Aaron Michael Kui, has been sworn in as the acting president of the Republic. This is the third time uh, Professor Kui has taken the seat as the acting president since assuming office as a speaker, uh, the seventh speaker of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. Professor Kui's assumption of the presidential throne Tuesday night was occasioned by the absence of the president, Nanado Dankwe Kufado, and his vice, Dr. Alaji Mamudu Baumia, from the jurisdiction. He, now, if you go to uh, the Constitution, Article 6011, uh, this is the um, reason why uh, he is sworn in. That uh, article provides for the Speaker of Parliament to act in the absence of the President and his vice. So he took the oath, the presidential oath, and the oath of secrecy uh, administered by the Chief Justice Sophia Kufu in the presence of members of the Parliament in accordance with Clause 2 of Article 60 of the Constitution. This is where we are. Kabila. This is too familiar story. Uh, we've, we've been there before. I remember uh, the former speaker, Mr. Dua Jahu. And now, this is the third time the, the now speaker has been sworn in. What do we do? We should continue swearing them in. You know, uh, Bright, let me say good morning to you and my good friend uh, and our viewers. I, I think that you know, some of these issues consistently present us an opportunity to awaken our conscience and our thinking about the kind of constitution we operate. Thus far, it's been the longest served democratic constitution since our inception as a nation in 1957 on the 6th of March. However, as um, documented by the Constitutional Review Commission, whose work has become, if you like, uh, stale, okay? This constitution was typically for a political transition from a military dictatorship into what I describe as a constitutional dictatorship. The reason, and if you listen and you read the reasoning, the documents, mm. the Consultative Assembly, the reasoning behind a lot of the things that they did, problematic as they, they were, or they still are, were meant simply to secure a democratic go government. 
and to discourage the military usurpers, the character of Mr. Rollins and co from coming back after handing over to a civilian rule as he did or they did with 31st December 1981. Whatever it was, it so happened that it was a transition from one man to himself, just changing clothes. Okay? We have come far. And at least we are confident today that in terms of political stability, we are there. I'm saying, together with former President Kufo, together with the late former President Atamels, together with former President John Dramani Mahama, together with President Nana Dankwa Kufuado, this constitution needs an immediate overhaul. Look, right, come to think of it. This is just one, honest, an, one aspect I'll deal with, and I'll go to a second one, mm. which is the creation, the problematic creation of the uh, Special Prosecutor's Office. You have the President of the Republic of Ghana functioning as President of this Republic, even on a holiday. He or only needs to become the President. Thank you. He is still the President of this Republic, on leave. The Vice President is the vice president of this republic on a foreign mission. Why on earth we have created this conundrum that the speaker of parliament, third in succession on the hierarchy of order, should act as president with what power? What can he do? Can he appoint ministers? Can he sack ministers? Can he initiate policy? So you see that it's a facade. It's a charade. Some call it debauchery. Pretense. Mendacity. It's lies. All grounded in that deceptive document we call a constitutional uh, a, a, a document, our 1992 constitution. And you see, problematic again as it is, you see what we're having with uh, 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 the Special Prosecutor's Office, mm -hmm. the challenges. I said it. You are amending Article 88, which is an entrenched clause. You can only do that according to Article 296, uh, 290, Clause 6, by proceeding from Parliament to go for a referendum. We didn't do that. What we did was to do a, a subsidiary legislation in Parliament. And we've created that office. Recently, our good friend and brother, uh, uh, Godfrey Yabuadami, with his, his boss, of course. I mean, I've said that. The, the, the show of energy. Mm. See what he's been able to do with the matter. Uh, what, what's the name? Uh, what you matter? You don't need a special prosecutor's office. As it's been done. To, but of course. To prosecute are, corruption? Uh, uh, no, you don't need that. In fact, a strong and able-willed attorney general and minister of justice can do that. My authority, justice, the late justice professor APK Kluge when he delivered the 2010 J.B. Danko Memorial Lectures. Is there. He said it. Because at the end of the day, if you are talking about the special prosecutor, who appointed the special prosecutor? The president, of course. So what's the difference, what's the difference in the appointment of the attorney general and the minister of justice? So that that argument people were making that the, pe the person becomes uh, uh, laddled or saddled with issues because of the appointing authority, the appointor. It doesn't change. So I beg. This matter of the speaker swearing in, yes, with the greatest of respect, that is a provision of the law, the position of the law now. Mm. I understand. It, it even went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has made a this pronouncement on it. Right. But I'm saying that, yes, that pronouncement is based on the state or the position of the law as we presently have. But is it not a mockery, the kind of law we have in our country today, that as we speak, President Nana Dudankwa Kufuado is on leave somewhere, as president of the Republic of Ghana, his vice president who acted is gone on an official visit, I'm told, somewhere in Washington. He is there as vice president and has acted as president. Then we have got the speaker who is the third in the uh, uh, succession mm. or order, now acting as president. You know, Peter. <laughs> so, so we have two presidents? Uh, we, not more than two. Oh, okay. If you look at it in 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 in, <laughs> okay. in, in the real sense of it, <laughs> All right. we have President Nana Dankwa Kufuado, mm. we have President and Vice President Mahmoud Bahomia, and we have President Speaker Mike, Professor Michael Kwe. So, 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 <laughs> what, what, what is this? So, 
And it is all I've said founded in, in the, the deceptive constitution. So the only way is to change it, review it. We change it overall. It needs a complete and complete overhaul. You see, it's interesting when you read the Constitutional Review Commission's report. They were brutal in some of their pronouncements, and yet they were measured in terms of the recommendations. All again based on this fear that somebody will come, we'll come back and, and then the look. Let us go and amend it and remove those indemnity clauses. Let people suffer for their sins. After all, we need to be responsible. That's the only way we will learn lessons. Let, let, let me pick Eric's brains on this. Eric, this is... Hmm. And, I, and I remember former Speaker Duaja who said, I won't do it. And then the Supreme Court had to make a ruling that you have to do it. Yeah. So we may have another speaker who, who might also say something but well, if what? somebody does that no but if, if, if you say you won't do that you'll be you'll be falling you fall in breach of, of the, law. Uh, the law and then the position of the supreme court which would in the circumstances of people like that mm. may amount to their removal yeah, from, removal office. from office. yeah you must be careful Eric, what do you think good morning brides mm. uh, good morning my uh, friend kabila mm. and brother and then also also good morning to all the viewers out there this is, a, this, is, <laughs> this is a conversation that um, I think has been had time and a number. And um, I share mostly, by and large, the views of Kabila in terms of a certain need to reactivate the work that had been done by the Constitutional Review Commission. If you read the, uh, the background to it, it actually talks about the fact that moving the constitution from a political constitution to a developmental constitution, mm -hmm. which means that it has to be something that would inure to the citizens of this country yeah. rather than a political document that really, in terms of its um, execution, mm -hmm. becomes problematic. There are a lot of work that had gone into the uh, Constitutional Review Commission work. Uh, some of it is what um, I think that is in tandem with the thinking of the president in respect to uh, MMDCs being el elected, elected by popular vote and all of those things, issues to do with um, other aspects of things that the, uh, the Ghanaian citizens had issues with. I, for instance, have had, I've, even, even though this is something that is new, I think the um, issue to do with the transitional Bill. Provisions. Provisions and right. amendments. I still the have the, and all yeah, I still have challenges with some aspects of it. Just that it sometimes makes even governance and development even difficult. In a situation where um, even in terms of appointing of board chairs and uh, board members and all those things mm -hmm. where uh, you would have uh, I mean institutional representation mm -hmm. but for some strange reason um, Sometimes it takes a year and a half or so because a, a new government comes into being and it takes a while for all of these boards and uh, to be constituted. To be constituted, uh, constituted. And then what it means is that work is stalled for some reason for almost a year, a year mm -hmm. and a half. Uh, so these are things that I think that practically would have to look at. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting what the, uh, the, the previous government did, uh, even under the late Professor Mills with that particular report. I mean, they issued a white paper to that effect, mm -hmm. agreeing with certain aspects of it and disagreeing with certain aspects of it. I know for a fact that a lot of money was actually spent in trying to uh, prepare that particular document. And if you look at the caliber of people who were actually activated to work on the uh, review, it's imperative that we probably go back to that document or we look at certain aspects of it. This issue to do with swearing in of the uh, Speaker of Parliament, which is essentially what Kabila spoke about in terms of the hierarchy of uh, leadership. Mm. It's something that in, in, in its all practicality, like he said, at every point in time, it doesn't matter where the president is, he's still the president of the land. The vice president is still the vice president of the land. And what does he mean? Does he mean that once he's sworn in, he still has all the full powers of an elected president. You see, it's also constitutional. I mean, you can uh, drill down to the, uh, the constitutionality of that mm -hmm. because the power of the president is vested in him by the people, by people going to queue 
and casting a vote. But the speaker doesn't have that. The speaker doesn't he have that. not voted for. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying that. I mean, but I also feel that in as much as we have certain deficiencies in that particular document, there are other things that we also have to pat ourselves on the back for. I mean, in terms of even the progression and the sort of development that we've been able to uh, engender over the period, there's certain things that I, I think that if you do a comparative analysis across the sub-region and even elsewhere, mm -hmm. we've done fantastic. So those elements that has always become like, a, a, if you like, a problematic are things that we can look at and and change so that we, it becomes stronger. I mean, I think that, that if you look what at should, what should start the change look at, process. If you, if you look at Eric, what should start the change process? No, it's a, it's activated. I mean, I think it's Kabila and um, Atik and Co. That we used to. I used to be a policy analyst mm. representing the party at IE and all that. And every time you are in opposition, there's even this conversation about uh, a certain winner takes all mentality, and we did all sort of work. Mm -hmm. But anytime you move from that point you, to you, the next stage, you leave it behind. You leave it behind. <laughs> you know. So these are practical things. We have to be very sincere with ourselves in I terms see. of even having. I think we did some work on having uh, programmatic political parties. So a political party is not just meant to be an entity that goes into action when there's an election, but it has to be known for a certain set of idiosyncrasies and ideals and work in, work policies and all. You understand? So I think that we are still probably a very small, uh, young democracy if you, if you compare us to the others. There's still more room for improvement, but I think that there are certain aspects of it that we can uh, be happy about. I mean, I keep using this example. We woke up one morning and we lost the president. Mm. And within five, six, seven hours, we had a new president sworn in with absolutely no fast whatsoever. It's as if that we had practiced it. it, it it's been done before. Mm. So these are elements, these are other aspects of it, issues to do with freedom of speech and the freedom of the media and all that. Sometimes there are issues to do with how it's been executed and people would have a reason to express a certain level of or sense of disquiet. But by and large, uh, these are things that we can say that, yes, it's working. Other aspects, I believe strongly that we can look properly into even what happens within the public sector, okay. issues to with appointment. People have had issues to do with the fact that the executive appoints the uh, the IGP, for instance. Almost everybody. And then, uh, then there's a, a police council that's headed by the executive. Uh, yeah, so, so we have to look at all of these things and look at the best case, I mean, best practices, mm. a ben benchmark some of these things against what pertains elsewhere. And then I'm sure that, like I used to work in a place where uh, we used to say, copy with pride. Mm -hmm. you know? So once the thing has already been done, probably there's absolutely no reason to reinvent the will, but find ways of making sure that our democracy thrives. Grateful. Let me quickly introduce Dr. Alhaji Haruna Rashid Brahim, a member of the NDC team. You see, good morning. Good morning. And hope you're doing great. Yes, I am. Thanks for Thanks joining for us. Me. And uh, we, we, we had started a conversation. Uh, the Speaker of Parliament is sworn in for the third time since the Zoom in office. The question is, should we go on doing that? Even though that's the, the, what the Constitution says. Why not? I mean, that's uh, what the Constitution provides, and I think that's what we should do. As long as we follow the dictates of the Constitution and we do what is needed to be done, um, the other question that one has to ask is what limitations does he have in his you know, acting position? Would he bind the real president, if you will, to certain actions and certain uh, decisions that he makes? And for how long is it going to be? Uh, could it be even better than that? Could, could it be such that between the president and the vice president, mm. they could schedule their, you know, their activities such that the two, at least one of them will be in the country at all times. I know that's not always the case, mm. but that will be the best so that you don't have these questions coming up where people are a little anxious as to uh, what decisions that he could, could he possibly slide in something that ordinarily they may be against, but because of his, you know, position now as, uh, you know, yeah, acting president, president, 
that he's doing it, something that they may be opposed to. But, you know, when you look at it, constitutionally, we're following the Constitution. As my brother said, when uh, uh, Professor Mills passed away within, you know, a very short time, uh, His Excellency John Dramani Muhammad was, you know, sworn in as president. And it went seamlessly, smoothly. So I think to a large extent, Ghana has done a very good job in transitions. Mm -hmm. As you can see that we've done about six or seven times, you know, transitions from one government to the other. And I really honestly don't, do not see any issue with this. But to the extent that they can limit the number of times, this being the third time, mm -hmm. it would kind of lower the temperature, if you will. And then you recall back in uh, the time of uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Doa Jaho, uh, there were some issues that came up and he didn't want to be sworn in as the president and that kind of thing. So, but here we are. This is what the, the issues are and uh, we are facing it. And I don't think... Uh, for, 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 for some, it's, it's a mockery because you have a president who, who, who does not cease to be a president outside and then an acting president in. For well, some, it's, it's a mockery. It is, it is. And then really, when you look at the number of times uh, President Nana Kufado has traveled out of the country, you know, since being sworn in as president, and you juxtapose that to, you know, what goods, what benefits really? are coming into the country, you know, and then the expenses, the expenses with this $17,000 an hour private jet plane, luxurious jet plane that going to see a football match and well, those, those are other allegations things. That were the, 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 the president said the president never went, went, went there to watch football. What did he go there to do? Well, we're not told, but the president said the president wasn't there to watch football. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have videos and, you know, pictures of him, you know, um, actually, they did go there, and that's what they went there to do. There may be other, you know, official duties, but what we were told in the newspapers, <laughs> that that's what, one of the things that he did. But even beside, even if it's you know, official duties that he went. Could it be, could this purse that he has sworn to protect, what they told us that they were going to protect the public purse, $17,000 an hour over a three week period? When you have students sitting on cement blocks, when you have Ghanaians sharing wa dirty water sources with animals, with dogs, cows is that the best use of our funds besides the issues that are raised when you have you know constitutional issues and other issues that are raised when he's out of the country and you know the anxiety that it creates and the number of times uh, I don't have the statistics right off hand but when you look at the number of times he has traveled more than any president but you don't have Not the statistics true. to prove. Not true. How do you know that? You, you say you don't hold on a second. Hold on a second. No, 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 I mean, I, I, don't have, I don't have the specifics. Mm -hmm. I don't have the specifics. But anecdotal evidence points to the fact that <coughs> he has traveled more than any president given the time, In the two and a half years, years so, 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 compared okay. to, to react you know, to you know so you the two and a half years. But again, we go back to the issue of expenses, $17,000 an hour. Do you know how much $17,000, what difference, how many ball holes? Okay, so what is the point here? The point, the point here is he came in, he came into power with right, the idea. allowed him to... No, he came into sorry, power yeah. with the idea. I'll, I'll get you the chance to react. He, ca he, 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 he came into... He came in. He came in. He came in to power with the idea of transforming Ghana. And part of that transformational process was to protect the public purse. And what do we see him doing? 
you know, leasing a private jet at a cost, an exorbitant cost of $17,000 an hour. And when you look at for over a three week period, this is at the same time that you have Ghanaian citizens who are suffering. Ghanaian citizens who are, you know, the economic hardships, unbearable economic hardships that are crying, are not able to put three square meals a day, are not able to pay their PDS or ECG bills, water is not flowing, hospitals, so, you, have, you have women giving birth on the floor. So tie, tie that one into the conversation we're having. What is the impact on the problem that we have, some have said we have with the Constitution, as far as swearing in a speaker because the two gentlemen, the two first gentlemen of the land are outside the jurisdiction? Well, again, bottom line is constitutionally, I mean, the Constitution provides that the vice president, if, if the president is not out, is, is out of the country, mm. the vice president takes over. He's supposedly, you know, a heartbeat away from the presidency. And if he is also out of the country, at the same time that the, when both of them are out, the third in line is the Speaker of the House. It's clear in the Constitution. Okay. And that's what we're following. But the impact of it, bottom line is when you look at it, you have to not just follow the Constitution, but what impact is it having on the ordinary Ghanaian? Mm. And it has to do with the costs involved, and especially when you have, you know, a president who came in with his men, you know, swearing to protect the public purse, and they are doing anything but protecting the public purse, especially in the light of all these hardships, economic hardships that people are facing. The schools, the infrastructure is not there, water, electricity, and, and economic hardships, you know, the, the drivers okay. are suffering. So much so that now, you know, at right. five, five cities and 19, uh, five cities and 20 persuas per liter, it has become the norm. People are not even complaining. Because okay. it's, it's something that Careful. has been going on. Alaji, I'll come back to you again. Eric, so you, you can react to some of the issues that you were not touching. I mean, uh, he says that uh, the, the, the president has traveled more than any other place. He said he doesn't have this strategy to do. No, but quickly. That's, for me, I mean, um, well, you, know, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know my... But you know because my, Eric wanted to... You know my style. Let, let I, I don't know Alaji very well. I, it's actually happens to be my neighbor. He doesn't know. I see him hmm. walking in the morning when I'm also going to the gym. And I don't want to disrespect him. But he's essentially misfired. And you see, I don't want to degenerate this conversation to degenerate into something else. But with all due respect, this whole idea of a $17,000 private jet that has been hired, it's ridiculous to start with. It looks as if that he came here with a certain prescripted uh, uh, narrative and we change the topic and he's going back to it. But the truth of the matter is that what's the role of a president? Presidents have all sorts of rules in terms of what happens even when it comes to international relations and all sorts of things. Like again, he said, he doesn't even have the statistics. You know, so you can't sit here and now create a certain impression that this particular president, for, by dint of you don't like him or the obsession with trying to tarnish and throw that at him decide to say that he's traveled more than every other president without statistics to mm. start with and that you're trying to now do uh, evaluate evaluation of what you think that if he travels out there he brings into this country and then he had almost a, a plethora of things that he seems to have seen that is wrong with this country forgetting that they left power eight years ago so eight years ago two and a half years ago. yeah sorry they were in power for eight years and left power two and a half years ago so eight, eight years eight, 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 two and a half years ago there were no people drinking dirty water there were no people uh, kids sitting in classroom blocks and all of those things you see when you do that and you don't actually tell the people of this country what you would do differently when they know for a fact that by dint of your crass incompetence and the sort of governance that you bequeath to us, you lost an election by over one million votes. Not true. 
You understand? Not true. Well, they do. They did. They did. Well, what did they lose by? Kamla, you allow him. Yeah. That let is me, his, me make uh, his figure. Let I, let I let don't have the me, figure. So you, yeah, you, you understand? Because you are emphatic on figures. Yes. Yes. I'm helping you. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And besides, no, you but came to fix it. They lost. They lost. You came to fix it, right? Fix it. Let me see. I will not sit here and say that if a single Ghanaian child is sitting on a block in a classroom, it is is a good thing, mm. or people don't have access to potable drinking water, uh, it's not a responsibility of government and all of those things. But if you look, you just oppose the NPP to the NDC in terms of the government, even if he wants to use the two and a half years. And the number of things, the, the things that, the, that. The, that has done, mm. just a couple of days, the IMF, the IMF had issued a report suggesting that there was so much incompetence in managing the economy to the point that you took us to the IMF for a full-blown bailout. You understand? So these are the same people sitting here now waxing the lyrical. Okay, no, let, let me get Kabila. So, uh, so Eric, wrap up. Let me get Kabila to come in, and then we can move on. Let me, 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 Eric Land. Let me land. Let me land. You see, so it's important once we have these conversations that we contextualize it, and I mean do a decent analysis of the issues. This is an issue to do a constitutional matter. Hmm. He came in with a Eric, you a, make a your point. You, you, you don't know, so worry about what he so said. So the point, go, the, the point is point. really simple. Yeah. President Akufado promised free SHS. As we speak, close to one million Ghanaians have had opportunity to do so. President Akufado promised to reinstate the nursing and teacher training allowance. He has done so. He spoke about finding employment for young people who heard that to four or five years have not found work. <laughs> Under thousand young Ghanaians have had an opportunity at NAPCO. That's There's so true. many That's things that true. I can talk about. Okay. The national identification card. <laughs> 1.2 million cars have been issued. Okay. All of these things are things that point to an economy that is on the right to drink. Today I'm you're no, just talking about no, no, no. policy rates coming down. Right. Now policy rates uh, are coming I'm down as a result of good governance. <laughs> issues to do with inflation. I'm grateful. Issues to do with the uh, 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 GDP for Eric, I'm terms grateful. of growth of the economy. Okay. The Thank manufacturing you. sector. Thank you. Let me get sector, Kabila. All of those things. Let me so get Kabila. Here, okay. All of a sudden. Uh, I'm grateful. I mean. I'm grateful. Talking about Kabila, Kabila please wrap up on this one for me. Right, you know, I, I don't envy you at all. Please allow uh, When you me. have to navigate mm -hmm. a program such as this between claimants <laughs> to making Ghana better than whatever anybody else did, when in fact their own narrations at each other's record will point to challenges that are obvious, you will have a problem. And that is why I will not envy your position seeking to navigate. But you see, it is sad. And I'm sorry, my, uh, uh, my two brothers, I thought Eric was going to avoid that invitation. But he's also went, he's gone in there to, to double and rouse around a critical issue that we should be concerned about. What are and they I was, saying? I was to no, what no, said, but, but please, I, when no, you could no, have, no, Eric, 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 no, no, Eric, 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 that should be the concern. Of course, I appreciate it here. This constitution is the longest thus far. But we cannot also ignore the many nagging problems that persist. And that would degenerate into creating chaos if we don't amend them. I am not the only person saying this. Former President Kufo mm. in 2005 said this in Khartoum when he came back from Sudan. The process was close. I mean, he was close to his tenure. He, they couldn't do anything yeah. about it. 2008, it was a campaign issue. Almost all the political parties made promises about this man, uh, constitution. Professor Mills went forward, your party, and set up a constitutional review commission. Mm -hmm. They did from 2010. Okay? We dilly dallied with it, spent money. The taxpayers' money you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Professor Mills died. Eight million dollars. Uh, the UNDP gave us money. Yes. I've forgotten the figures, yes. but mm -hmm. huge amounts were committed into it. Pro Pro President Mama came in. 
set up the Constitutional Review Implementation Committee, issued a white paper. He left office. We had not gotten to the bottom of this matter. President Akufuado, in his inaugural speech, made a promise that he was going to tackle this constitution for a complete overhaul. We are in his third year. Nothing has been done in that regard as far as the public we know. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that this is a conundrum. And you see, if you try to rationalize it, because it is constitutional, well, because, said because, because, it is constitutional. because it is constitutional, you are losing sight of one thing. Let's ask ourselves, what is the state of President Akufuad where is, wherever he is now? What is his state? Who is he? He's to the Republic of, medical, of Ghana. Medical, medical, no, no, no. I'm or, saying or, that what is what is his relationship to the Republic no. of Ghana? Kabila, he said the president of, of, of Ghana. He was asking but you what know, is his state. No, I'm saying that no. what is the, the relationship? The well, I'm, re I'm rephrasing. Okay. What is the ref you, you, I'm not asking you to mm. answer. Mm. The point I'm making and to emphasize the mockery we live, mm. the deception we have. Look, let's not pretend about this. That President Akufuado is somewhere on a holiday mm. as president of the Republic of Ghana. The, His Excellency the Vice President, who acted and necessarily did not have to take the oath the of office. Oath this oath of office they do take is it's a joke, it's a charade. I mean, the president, does the president take the uh, uh, oath of office anytime he returns? No, he doesn't. So, so what, what, what is it really that we do? I'm saying that, look, look at the history of this constitution. It was made for Mr. Rollins, turn him from a military dictator into a constitutional dictator. And I've said it and I want to argue, we have never had any new president apart from President Rollins. We have had President Kufo Rollins, President Atamils Rollins, President uh, John Mahama Rollins, mm. President Akufuado Rollins. They are all working in the shadows of Mr. Rollins. Let us kill that shadow of Mr. Rollins which is haunting Ghana and holding our progress back. We need to do that. And that mm. means a, a complete overhaul of this constitution. And if we do that, some of these things will go off. Mm. We can amend Article 88 the way we want it, so that we will not create, uh, uh, you know, problematic offices as the Special Prosecutor's Office, whose work could be done or is being done by the Attorney General, and we don't need to spend money on that. Let us be serious about it. Okay. It is a constitution that is the problem. Grateful. If I may, I just, I like I just, I just on want to one. add just a little thing. You know, we can sit here and argue about the pros and cons and then academic discussions about the Constitution and all of that. But I tell you, this morning, the most parents are more concerned about the bread and butter issues. Okay? And yes, this has an impact on the bread and butter issues? Well, I, I'm telling you that when you ask, when you go out on the street right now and you ask people, they are not going to be so much concerned, as important as the Constitution is, mm. they are more concerned about how they are going to get from Nima to Accra, how much it's going to cost them, from Medina to Accra or to Kaswa, how are they going to put some food on the table. These are the this, issues. This, this These are the PNC. issues. <laughs> These are, Kabila, if I may, if I may. I will say, Kabila, Kabila, I'm here when you I'm here. 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 I'm here when you were saying this. There are people pooping the constitutional discussion. Kabila, I'm not pooping. I'm not. It's not a bread and butter issue. People are concerned how to keep the light on. Him. I love him. I have People not. are concerned about how to keep the light on, how they are going to fetch water so that they can give their children bath to go to school. Mm -hmm. These are the real issues that moms and dads and brothers and sisters are worried about this morning. I'm not in any way saying that constitutional provisions and issues are not important. So what's the but I'm telling you, what I'm saying, because well, you, come, you give you me see what I'm No, no, you, you are saying, you you say you say gentlemen, I haven't invited the No, but the thing is that his point, I'm saying, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that the issue, no, it is important, 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 I have not said that, I have not said that, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that bread and butter issues, how to put food on the table, Mm -hmm. how to put shoes on the children on, on children's so feet how to how, how to so get to good health care health care hospital hospitals how to right stop now. the unending corruption that is ongoing the press freedom the suppression of freedom the liberties 
of people. Those are the things that people are concerned about. So tell us okay? how you do And this is okay. all tied into the Constitution. Grateful. It's all tied into the Constitution. Well, uh, no, this is the truth. I, I'm, These I'm are things that well, I'm are you, aren't you concerned? Aren't okay. you concerned about your colleagues being okay. tortured? Grateful. Grateful. You Dr. Alvaji Haruna Rasid Ibrahim is a member of the NDC team. Eric Tum is a member of the MPP team. The Acting General Secretary of the CPP, uh, James Kwabena Bonfe Kabila, was also here. Good morning once again, gentlemen. Are we done? We're done. We're at the top of the hour, 8 o'clock. Grateful for your time with us. Stay here.